Now, this is Sunday night. So this, this isn't the visitor time when everybody reading the newspaper comes by and they want to see what's on the sign. They come in. So this is pretty much believers, right? So I thought about it. For just a moment, let me ask you, just sit there and think about this. How many of you at this very moment know that your sins are forgiven, that Jesus Christ died in your place, and that right now you possess eternal life? Now just think about it. You know that, right, inside. You believe that. You're confessing Christians. In other words, you know you are a born-again believer. You know that you're saved by the grace of God, not by any works of righteousness that you could ever do. So did you know that God loves you to proclaim that to Him? So I thought we'd do a little practice here, okay? Did you know they they, uh, started doing this in youth conferences? Do you know how they're starting to give the invitation in youth conferences because of our post-Christian world we're in? In youth conferences, if you want to come to Christ, they don't make you come forward and they don't make you raise your hand with everyone's head down. They, they just have the people that, that come to Christ stand up and cry out to Him right there where they're sitting. Well, they don't have very many people converted because people aren't willing to do that. So we're not, not giving an invitation tonight, but do you know what you can do tonight? You could silently proclaim Jesus Christ and declare that you know Him by just testifying of that by standing up. So this is what I'm going to ask you to do. Okay? If you really know you're born again tonight, why don't you just silently stand up as a declaration of that? Okay? Now some are sleeping, so bump them. I don't want any... Don't pass out tracks to the to people that are sleeping. Now think about this. You have silently proclaimed you belong to Christ. Now think about this. What if I was standing up here with an AK-47 and a green bandana on that says Hamas or Hezbollah. And all of my buddies had them slung over their shoulders and they were going to ferret out the infidels from the true followers of Allah. Would you stand up so readily? Think about that. See, we're not at that point. Now, you may be seated. I don't want anybody to get... We're not bringing out the machine guns and I'm not going to scare you or anything else, okay? Think about this. The simple act of distilling your testimony of salvation down to a short, simple declaration of what God has done in your life is a very major part of our worship to the Lord. We, sometimes we don't think about this. We don't think that the content of the redeemed in heaven is they just have simply reduced down to a few words that Jesus loved them, that He bought them, that He paid the price of their sins, that He shed His blood, that He is their Redeemer, that He is the Lamb that was slaughtered. Slain in Greek means slaughtered. It's very graphic. Jesus was slaughtered for our sins. And and they don't go on and on with four-hour-long testimonies. They just have reduced it down to the essence. That's what we're doing forever in heaven. Learning to worship our Redeemer by declaring in a short, concise way His substitutionary atonement. Now, I have a simple request for each of you who stood. So that's everybody, okay? All of you stood. And that is that because you're redeemed by Christ's blood, How about taking a few minutes this week and write down on a small piece of paper, a three by five card, type it in your computer, something, your salvation testimony and whittle it down to 30 seconds or less. You should have one short enough that if you're on one of these airplanes, you know, what were they called? Bombardiers that just crashed in Buffalo, was it? You know, we have ice. I know it's warming up, but it might come back. And if you're on one of those bombardiers and the pilot says, we're experiencing some uh, trouble here, don't know what's going to happen, you know what you should do? Yeah, just have that 30-second testimony ready and turn to the person on this side and say, hey, Jesus Christ loved me and loosed me from my sins. He is the Lamb that redeemed me from all, all the penalty of my sin. And I know if this plane smashes some house in Buffalo and bursts into flames, did you read the report of that? 
The neighbors saw the people in the plane. It hit like that, and it just sat there. And then it went, and just, just like that, just exploded in flames, and no one got out. Did you know we should be ready? Don't wait till a plane crashes. You can say it in an elevator. You can say it at school. That's why Tony Waldron at Hazlitt, I don't think he's still alive. That's why he called me the deacon, because I shared the gospel with him. And the only thing you could think of in the Catholic Church is only deacons. You're not a priest. He could tell that. But he said, you must be a deacon or something in the Catholic Church because you, you're so vo- vocal in your evangelistic work. Writing down your testimony, you don't have to have an exact date. You don't need to go into flowery details. The essence is what God did. See, that's what the essence of a testimony is not me. It's what God did. It says in Jonah 2.9, salvation is of the Lord. So what did God do in your heart and life? Not what you did. In fact, I sat down at my computer and I took five minutes and I, I just kept typing my testimony down and using the word count thing, you know, because I knew I had to, I know the speed I talk, so do you, you know, and I know how, exactly how many words I speak. So I knew I had to get, to get 30 seconds, I speak 87 words every 30 seconds when I'm just talking normal talk. And so I had to get down what God did into 87 words. And it took me five minutes to reduce it to 87 words. And this is what I wrote. This is my 30-second testimony. I praise God for saving me from my sin. I first heard the gospel with my heart in 1962. Before then, I feared only the consequences of getting caught. But on that November day, I first heard God, knowing my sin was against Him. At that moment, I knelt confessing my sins, asking for his gracious promise, forgiveness, and cleansing. And from that moment, 46 years ago, he took all my sins on himself and moved to live within, never to leave or forsake me. 87 words. Could you share in 30 seconds how you came to know Christ? You don't have to have November. You can say I was 12. You could say I was 6. I was at VBS. I was at home. I was in a storm. I, I was in the military. I, I thought that the ship was sinking. I mean, doesn't I thought, you know, that I was dying or whatever. But I would encourage each of you who are born again and know Christ to make these next few weeks a time of offering and listening to offerings of praise to the Lamb, our Redeemer. I mean, we're leading up. We're, by the way, Easter's coming. Can you imagine the joy it would be at Easter dinner not to just sit around and have all that food? but to have every member of your family share audibly their testimony. You might even get a little exotic on this. Did you know we celebrate two birthdays for everybody in our family? We celebrate the the day they were born of the flesh, and then we celebrate the day they were born of the Spirit, their spiritual birthday. And you know what the person that's being honored gets to do? They get to share their testimony with the whole family, how they got saved. Isn't it wonderful to think that the greatest possession we have is our eternal life and that we should... Let the Redeemer of the Lord say so. We should talk about it, share it. Each time we all do that, we get a small taste of what heaven will be like forever for all of us as we join the redeemed, telling Christ our Redeemer thanks over and over and over for our salvation. And so we need to be those who respond to Christ with thanksgiving.